A two-time All-American in women's basketball, Kim Pinner Dara helped lead Evangel Women's Basketball to a coveted NCCAA National Championship in 1986. A three-time first-team All-District selection as her career numbers rank second best in rebounding and blocks only behind teammate Teresa Marlowe. Her 1,079 rebounds make her one of only two Evangel players to pull down 1,000 rebounds. She still ranks fifth all-time in scoring with 1,890 points and ranks second all-time in blocks with 222. Ladies and gentlemen, a 2022 Evangel Athletics Hall of Famer, Kim Pinner Dara. I did not know that I was going to be first. <laughs> I thought I was going to be third, but anyway, that's okay. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, everybody. Um, <clears throat> first, I want to thank the uh, Hall of Fame Committee for my nomination and selection into the Evangel Hall of Fame. Evangel is near and dear to my heart, and I am so grateful and very appreciative of uh, being here tonight and receiving this wonderful honor. Next, I want to thank Dr. McDonald and Philip Dowden. Uh, for all their hard work uh, putting this event together. And Philip, incidentally, is from Mountain Grove, where I'm from, too. So um, I want to uh, congratulate the other inductees tonight. Um, also, congratulations to Cade Kaufman, which is not here tonight, and uh, it's Aaron Russell. They were gonna re they're receiving the uh, Dr. Stair and Sanders Sorbo Student Athlete of the Year Award, so I wanted to thank that or congratulate them also. So. When I arrived here 40 years ago, which is hard to believe, <laughs> little did I know the experiences I would have, the, <laughs> and I knew I was gonna get emotional, so. <laughs> so uh, little did I know <clears throat> the experiences I would have, the education I would get, and the um, lifelong friends that I would make here. Um, so 40 years ago, I would never have dreamed that I'd be standing here tonight receiving this wonderful honor. Um, so I would like to tell you my story of how I came to Evangel. Um, so I'm from Mountain Grove, and believe it or not, uh, when I was a freshman in high school, we did, well, first, we did not have girls sports at our school. We did not, they did not put girls sports in our school until I was a freshman in high school. So they put in volleyball, basketball, and track in which I played them. And uh, anyway, so fast forward to my senior year, we'd had good teams in basketball, volleyball too, but uh, we had a, I had a good coach, Coach Tom Hutchinson. And, uh, but my senior year, basketball season was over and I was gonna go to the University of Missouri to go to school where my brother Kirk and my sister Lori were going to school. And that's where I was headed. But I was selected to play in this uh, Lions Club All-Star Basketball game. Uh, they have this every year. They have area girls against the Springfield uh, girls, and they have the same with the boys, for what boys, area girls, and, or boys and area, and boys Springfield team. So anyway, I was on the Lions Club All-Star uh, girls team. So our coach that year just happened to be Coach Stair from here at Evangel. And I'm sorry he can't be here tonight. Uh, so anyway, he was my coach. And throughout the week, uh, we were practicing. And he would um, start talking to me about coming to Evangel. Would I like to come to Evangel to play basketball for him? And I thought, well, I hadn't really thought about that. But yeah, I would like to come to Evangel and play basketball, although I was going up to uh, the University of Missouri. So, since I was interested, he contacted my mom and my dad, and he went to Mountain Grove, and he, um, he went to talk to them about me coming here. So after we discussed it, um, I decided to, uh, that I would come here. Uh, I would be an hour from home. Um, I'd be here with my grandparents in Springfield. Uh, my, my parents, everybody can come watch me play basketball. So, you know, this is the perfect fit for me. So I decided to change and come to Evangel. And it was a wonderful decision. Um, so, and I wish Coach Stair was here, but I wanna thank Coach Stair uh, for seeing the potential in me and bringing me here to Evangel. 
I loved every moment that I was here. Um, I want to thank Coach Bowen. He was my coach my last two years. Um, uh, and we had really good teams. Uh, he led us my senior year, 1986. He led us to win the National Christian College Tournament. And that 1986 team was inducted into the Evangel Hall of Fame a few years ago. And we all remarked with this team, we got back together. And we, had, we hadn't been together in years. But when we got back together, we remarked how uh, it was like we'd never been apart. We were just like family. So that was just a special team. And we, I always had, we had special teams and special teammates always. So thankful for them. Uh, and so I am thankful for Coach Dare and Coach Bowen. They were two great coaches. I loved them dearly. And um, they were also wonderful Christian men. So thanks to them. Um, I want to thank my family and friends that are here. And I have several. <laughs> um, I want to thank my mom uh, and my dad. My mom is here. My dad passed away in 1996. And um, they love coming and watching me, to come to watch me play basketball. And uh, my dad would be very proud if he were here tonight. just like my mom is. So um, I want to thank my husband Ron's here and my son John's here and my brothers and sisters, my brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws, lots of nieces and nephews and friends. Um, got my friend Kim here that we met here at Evangel and um, she's flown all the way from Florida to be here for me tonight. I've got my good friend Sandy who ironically we played on that all-star basketball team together um, and then we're teammates here at Evangel for all four years and we've remained just really good friends ever since. So I want to thank them all for being here for their love and support and um, when I find out that somebody's going to go to school here at Evangel and I'm first of all I'm happy for them and but my response is always the same and I always say I hope you love it there as much as I did. And uh, the Lord really blessed me when he uh, led me here to Evangel, and I'm so thankful he did. So thank you, and thank you, Evangel University, for this wonderful honor. One of the most prolific wide receivers in Evangel football history, Brandon Schmidley was a three-time All-American who led Evangel in receiving in 1994 and 1995. Schmidley still ranks second all-time with 2,639 yards receiving, trailing only Evangel Hall of Famer Anthony Ray. His 10 touchdowns in 96 rank eighth best in a season and he finished his career with 24 touchdown catches, fourth most in Evangel history. As a freshman in 94, Schmidley led Evangel with 42 catches as Evangel reached the NAIA postseason for the first of three trips during his career. As a junior, Evangel finished 11-1 and reached the national semifinals, falling to Sioux Falls 28-22. As a senior, Evangel again reached the postseason, going 9-2 and winning back-to-back -back heart championships. During his four seasons, Evangel posted a 33-8-2 record. Ladies and gentlemen, a 2022 Evangel Athletic Hall of Famer, Brandon Schmidt. To Evangel, thank you to the Hall of Fame committee who made all these decisions. Thank you for the good work you guys are doing. Thank you to everyone who bribed the committee in order to make this happen. Leanne, mom and dad, money well spent, thank you. <laughs> this is a special day for me. <clears throat> My only regret is that the queen couldn't be here. <laughs> is, it, is it too soon for that? <laughs> but we will always, Coach Bearfield, and all the other inductees know that we were inducted the same day that, that King Charles is being inducted into his. So in case you forget the date, just look that up. Uh, football is still a part of my life. It's not actually been continual. I've not jumped into coaching like a lot of the guys that we played with did. Um, but now I'm coaching my son, Zach, his sixth grade football team, which is a thrill. Uh, we were leaving the practice last night. 
and one of the young, the young men came up to me and said, hey, this is the weekend that you uh, get abducted at Evangel, right? <laughs> I said, yes it is, yes it is, Ryland. Thank, thank you for remembering that. So, first of all, um, I'd like to thank the little people, the offensive line. Now, it would be funnier if you knew our offensive line, because they were all really big. Uh, so the little people thing there was a joke. Uh, so I remember, I remember coming, uh, being in high school, Mount Vernon, Missouri, where I grew up, a great, great bunch of coaches and teammates there. And Coach Bearfield and Coach Ropke and Coach Metcalf calling, coming down to visit. We sat in the back corner of the library at Mount Vernon, and you guys just told me how great I was, which was fun. And then I get to Evangel, and I really see where I rank. The first road trip, <clears throat> the first road trip, we're on these buses with these narrow seats, which was fine for me, except right next to me, the assigned seat was to Kenny Holmes. Huh. So if you know Kenny Holmes, you are gonna laugh here. We get assigned rooms, and so here I am, freshman, and my assigned roommates, for the first time on, a, I think it was a road trip to McKendree or something, is Alex Bryant, Dustin Kennard, and David Stinson. So these four guys I've just mentioned are all great guys. And they're greatly over 300 pounds at that time each. And so Kennard comes into the, the hotel room and he drops his stuff down. And I guess he's excited. We're on our first road trip. And he goes, hey, boys, let's wrestle. <laughs> and I'm sitting there in the room as a freshman thinking, this is how it ends. <laughs> it all comes to an end right here. My life started to flash before my eyes. I'm remembering being like six, seven years old with my dad in the front yard because when we would, he would take me and my brother out to the front yard and we would run routes. And most people go out with their dad to the front yard and play catch. My dad would take me out to the yeah, front yard. We ran routes. I learned at seven years old what a button hook route was and an out yard and a 10 yard out and an, and an in and a slant. And I learned that you make the diamond to catch it in front of you and you make a basket to catch it over your shoulder. All important things. I remember in the first game, or one of the early games in, um, we called it Mighty Might Football back then, and Coach Bevo Baldwin, so anybody from Mount Vernon knows Bevo, Coach, that if, he were, if, I, if anybody were in a crowd and he were to yell, Brandon, run hard, I would hear him through the noise because it's that vivid of a memory in my mind. I remember him looking me in the eyes and saying, it's on two, on two. So I walked up to the line. And Dustin Baldwin, the quarterback, sat down, said hut, and I jumped across and hit the guy across from me. And I turned around and nobody else had moved. It was on two. And I'd never realized somebody could throw a cowboy hat into the ground so hard as what I saw him do that day and kick it as far as he could possibly kick it. It was an impressive, an impressive memory. Um, so those were the good moments, those memories flashing before my eyes of the teammates in junior high and high school and all the things that I learned from people like Stan Taylor and Skip Brock and Terry Flanagan, guys who seemed to magically inspire us that no matter what the situation was, whether we were playing somebody that was ranked way higher than us or if we were down by 20 points at halftime, we could always come back and win. And my friends and I, Dustin Baldwin and Joe Dan Vendelin, we thought we're going to bring this Mount Vernon mentality to Evangel. But now I'm thinking, how am I going to make it beyond this night in this room? So I made the decision, the wise decision, looking back, that I was going to sleep on the floor, separate from everybody else, and hope that no one rolled out of their bed that night. We did wake up the next morning alive and well, at least I did, and uh, went to the first game where I made my first catch as an evangel crusader at the time. It was just a little short drag route. Uh, I was probably only six, eight yards deep. I settled in behind the linebacker, uh, inside linebacker and the outside linebacker, and Brian McNabb threw it to me. I kept, caught it, fell to the ground. The whole time, just thinking, I want to stay as far away from this linebacker on this side and this linebacker. This It was a decision made out of fear. And then in the film meetings the next week, I just received all the adulation from Coach Bearfield for making a, such a veteran decision to find the gap in the zone and be open. So. Something, sometimes things work out for you that way, so that was nice. But the next week, interestingly enough, I was sitting by, uh, or roomed with Pat Turner and John Dollar, and I think Jeremy Crastina, all men whose weight begins with the number one, and so I was able to survive the rest of my time at Evangel. So many great memories, so much fun while we were here. Coach Metcalf, you always had the receiving core 
ready for showtime mode. You call this the Playmakers. I, I wish I still had. I think I wore it till it wouldn't hold together. The, um, the receiver shirt that said on the back, Believe and You Shall Receive. Every week, Coach Bearfield, Coach Ropke calling up plays that would put, Evangel, put an Evangel show on the field. We could be backed up in our own end zone, and they would call, call a deep throw, go for the end zone from our end zone. I remember Coach Bearfield, you specifically saying, those are awful big thirds for a DB to have to cover. So we'd call the play and go for it. It was so much fun. Um, by the way, I'm so glad that we're here together today. I mean, you deserve this so much, and it's a special honor for me to be here to be a part of what you're doing. So thank you to the team for putting us together. I was told there would be some receivers in the room from the current team. So see you guys back there. A few receivers, yes. Some over here. Are they, did you guys move over here? Did they leave on me? They said, oh, he's going to start talking, so they snuck out. But you guys stayed. Thanks. So I thought, OK, I guess we're supposed to say something a little bit inspirational. Um, so, and I thought, you know, my kids are here, Alyssa, Zach, and Janelle, so I'd like for their to, them to hear something inspirational. And I did actually have a little bit of a motto. It's not like something that I like printed on anything or went around giving speeches about, but I did have a little bit of a motto when I was a player. And it was this, that a bad pass was a chance to make a great catch. And so I had really good quarterbacks that I played with. Uh, Eric Black and Brian McNabb, I already mentioned Brandon Kelly was a quarterback. Even going back into the high school with people like Dustin Baldwin and Chris Johnston that, that made a lot of catches easy. But every once in a while, one would come out bad. And a lot of receivers in that moment make a decision that, oh, this one's going to be, not, this one's not catchable. I'm not going to really go for it and waste my energy. I was stupid enough to go for them every time, or at least I tried to do it every time. And so it was amazing how sometimes surprising things would happen. Like I literally remember there being a throw one time. It was behind a defensive back, and I wasn't going to be able to get to it. But I just ran and like flung my arms out. I couldn't see the ball. And then the next thing I know, I am booking it down the sidelines, looking, the ball's in my hand, going to the end zone. And I'm literally thinking, how did that happen? Because sometimes God just surprises you with those things. So my advice to you is to do just that. Whenever something bad is thrown at you, give it a shot go after the opportunity for a great catch. And it doesn't just apply to receivers catching the ball. At any time in a game, the circumstances of the game may be such where it feels like a really bad situation. But really bad first halves are actually opportunities to make really great comebacks in the second half. Yeah. And finally, for your life, really bad life situations will come your way. And if you'll go for it, God might surprise you with some really great, amazing testimonies as a result. So go for it and see what God does. Mom and Dad, we're not having this conversation here without you guys. Wow, didn't expect that shaky voice to happen. That was weird. <laughs> so you guys were at every game, at every level. I know, Mom, you were praying for me regularly, and it made a big difference. Um, I told one of the sixth grade moms the other day who was anxious about something. I said, you know, moms are the heart and the soul of any good team. I'm pretty sure they take the losses harder than anybody else, but they enjoy the wins more than anybody else. And it may even be a worse of an experience for a girl who starts as my cheerleader girlfriend to become my fiance, to finish out my career as my trophy wife. <laughs> and all the support that you gave me, Leanne, I love you. And uh, you were my biggest fan then, and I'm your biggest fan now. And it's a joy as we gather together to watch all the stuff that our kids are doing. Coaches, Coach Bearfield, Coach Metcalf, every coach that ever had anything to do with what we were doing on the field, thank you so much. Um, you made a huge difference in my life. I'm looking forward to this evening and all the stories that we get a chance to share with one another. Teammates, there's so many of you guys here. It's such a joy and an honor. You guys taught me things like trusting one another, committing to one another, depending upon each other. Thank you, each one of you guys. My family and friends, people from the community that are here, all of you have made an impact. And to this university, uh, which I love so much, which made such a big difference in my life, to President Spence for starting this program, and now President Rakes and our athletics department, who have visions for the future that are going to make us all proud. It's great to have been a crusader, and it's an honor to now be a part of the Valor Hall of Fame. Thank you. The all-time winningest coach in Evangel history, Keith Bearfield, set the mark for Evangel football, making it the winningest football program in the state of Missouri in the 90s. 
Fairfield led Evangel to four postseason appearances, including the national semifinal in 1996. He earned Hart Coach of the Year honors in 1996 and 1997. Coach Keith Barefield, congratulations on your Hall of Fame induction. You deserve it. Only thing I have to say is, what took so long? If I'm doing my Evangel football history correctly, Evangel football didn't know about district champs, conference champs, playoffs, national champs. Coach Barfield, you helped start that tradition. You helped start that. That's right, my freshman year, 1988. You did that, Coach. And when you became the head coach, Evangel football has always been on top of the Baker University, the Mo Valley University. You started that tradition, Coach. I'm so happy and proud that you are in your correct position, which is the Evangel Football University Hall of Fame. Coach, I love you. We all love you. Thank you, Coach, for all the years. Thank you for all the teaching. Thank you for everything, Coach, from the bottom of my heart. I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, a 2022 Evangel Athletics Hall of Famer, Keith Bearfield. I'm not even going to try to get through it. Um, Keith, it's just a great honor for me to be able to be in this position today to see you inducted. Um, Keith is a, um, was my coach. We were co-workers and he was my boss and he's always been my friend and uh, I'm honored by it. So it's great, great to induct you today. I know you guys are wondering how I kept my youthful looks. It wasn't easy. But I'm going to tell you, a lot of you guys are to blame for it. <laughs> when I came here, a lot of the players were saying, Coach, tell stories, tell stories. Well, if I don't tell enough stories, it's because, and my dear sweet wife said, Babe, don't get started. <laughs> don't get started. But, uh, it's great to be here. It's great to see everybody. I want to thank Dennis and, and the athletic department for putting this on. Uh, you know, back when I was here and we had the, the induction ceremonies, it basically it was at halftime of the football games. And what I would really like for you to do, Dennis, if you could do me one favor, could you re-induct Tony Dollinger and let him come up here and say something? Because I can, I'm tired of hearing him complain that he didn't get to go, come up here at a dinner and have a speech. <laughs> I said re-induct him at some other time. <laughs> well, we'll make sure that we don't come. Uh, <laughs> okay. But uh, I truly want to thank, uh, first of all, my wife, Lisa. I hope you guys have a chance to meet her. Yeah. She's a... Uh, now, first of all, let me back up. I'm trying to keep that stringer from winning any money. I'm betting you how long it's going to take me to get emotional, okay? There's an over and under, what phase, what phase of my speech I get emotional, and how many times I get emotional in my speech. Not that we gamble at Evangel, <laughs> but, but, some, but sometimes we, we wager on things. Uh, and no money will cross hands, I'm telling you. But uh, thank my wife, Lisa, for putting up with me for all these years. Um, the easy years were here at Evangel. She traveled all over the country with me. And I'm not easy to travel with, much less live with. And uh, we went from San Antonio, Texas, to Shreveport, Louisiana, back to Texas, to Oklahoma, back to Oklahoma, or back to, to Texas, to Florida, and back to Texas. And she told me, we're not moving again. 
because she's home. But yeah, thank you, baby, for, for all your help. One thing I will advise any of you guys going into, into coaching, get a wife, marry a wife that can make a big contribution to your program. Because when I was in San Antonio, that's where I met her, and I was working for John Hagee, coaching their football team. And we got married, and her son, Brian, was the star of the offensive line for three years for me. She made a big contribution to my success there. <laughs> and uh, had a great time coaching my two boys as well. I want to thank my mom and dad. To be honest with you, if it's up to my mom and dad, I wouldn't be here. I'd have never played football, right? Right, brothers? Because my brothers didn't get to play. And if it weren't for my brothers, I'd have never got to play. Because it, that's, how, that's how conservative the Assemblies of God were back in those days. And they made sure that I got to play. And they never complained about them not being able to. They're my biggest fans, my biggest supporters all through the years. I wouldn't be here without them. And I thank you so much, guys. Um, my sons, Billy and Keith, they couldn't be here. They're coaches. Billy's got a game tonight in Braswell. Keith is uh, an, analyst, an analyst with the uh, University of Incarnate Word. They're ranked, I think, fifth in the nation in FCS. They get to go out to Nevada and play the University of Nevada tomorrow. So he's flying, he's flying out there. He's in Reno. So I wouldn't want him to be anywhere else. Because if I were coaching, I wouldn't be here. I'm going to tell you that right now. So um, it was a, I had a great time coaching them and, and, and Brian. And I got to coach Billy and Keith in middle school, in high school, and college. Not too many people can say that. That is a life achievement right there. And I'll never forget we were playing Black Hill State in South Dakota. And we were nationally ranked. I was at Northwestern Oklahoma then. We were playing Black Hill State. We were both nationally ranked. Big, big early season game. Keith was a freshman. Billy was my starting quarterback. He was a senior. And me and Billy and Keith get in an argument while we're on offense about the play that we just ran. And everybody's looking at it. We're having a family argument right in the middle of the field. And it's my offense. I knew what we should be, what we should be doing. But they were saying, Dad, no, that's not right. The problem with that is, is they were right and I was wrong. And I said, well, I said, Dad, we've been in this offense all our lives. You've only been doing it for a few years. <laughs> so, but uh, thank them. Our other, our daughter Leslie, she didn't uh, contribute so much as a football player, but she was a, a great athlete at, at Cornerstone and at Evangel Christian. And so we're a, we're, a, we're an athletic family. We have nine grandchildren, Whew. all strategically located along I-35. <laughs> That's why we live in San Antonio. That's why Grandma said, we're leaving Lakeland, Florida. We're going back to San Antonio. There are a lot of people that uh, had a big part in my life. And I want to try to quickly go through, go through these. You know, first of all, I would like to also congratulate the fellow inductees, uh, the basketball players and the team, and Kim Penner, Jeff Zielinski. A lot of people don't know that I was a part of the great uh, team of Bearfield, Bro, and Schoolfield. That's not an attorney firm. Don't worry about that. But we, uh, we did the scoreboard, scores table back in those days and I got to watch all those all those people play and I was terribly impressed. First of all, Kim Penner was one of the nicest young ladies that I've ever seen and when she get on the basketball court I said that can't be her. <laughs> that can't be her. Jeff Zielinski, I, I would say about Jeff is that he never met a shot he wouldn't take. <laughs> but he, he sank him most of the time. Um, 
Robert Spence never has one man's decision change the tra trajectory the trajectory of another man's life 50 years ago I was a prospect for college trying to determine which school had the best NIL program <laughs> <laughs> and my high school coach asked me Keith does your church have a college that plays football. They could give you a scholarship. Because he knew of our, our conservative <coughs> Assembly of God background. My answer was, I laughed. I said, Coach, never in my lifetime, never in my lifetime would that happen. Four years later, I come with my brother Ron, and he's looking at being a missionary in school of missions. I, I ride from Eufaula, Alabama to, to Springfield, Missouri. His roommate is the resident director in Krause Hall. So we spend the night. We get about 3 o'clock in the morning, spend the night. This was 1976. And so I'd heard so much about Evangel College at that time. When I woke up, I said, well, you know, I, I've, got, I've got to see this place. And I walk out, and I saw the spaceship that they called the Ashcroft Center. And I saw the barracks where you could roller skate all around the campus. And you've got to realize I was going to school at what is now Southeastern University, and we may not have had the most beautiful campus there, but we had Disney and the beaches. <laughs> and that was a big struggle on go to class, go to the beach, go to class, go to the beach, go to the beach. <laughs> and my first words were, who would want to go to Evangel College? I said, wow. Six months later, I was one. That's when they started football. I didn't want to be a coach. I was a pre-seminary major. Thought I'd go into the ministry. That was my plan. My high school coach that asked me that question on Friday mornings on game day, he would have this mayonnaise jar full of this white liquid. And he'd be drinking it starting first period PE was he had ulcers bad. And he said, Keith, if there's anything in this world that you can do that you would love, do it, but don't ever be a football coach. <laughs> I said, don't worry, coach. You convinced me. I never even thought about it. I never even gave it another thought. <clears throat> I thought uh, the good Lord had called me to be in the full-time ministry and be a pastor. And that's what I was saying. I'm the biblical studies major here. I graduated, graduated from the seminary. I only came back to Evangel and worked as a GA so I could get my degree from the seminary because I thought I was going to go and be and do something else. And when the opportunity came to be the head coach here, it was President Spence that convinced me to be a coach. He said, Keith, you will have at least 100 young men that you will have the opportunity to influence for Christ every year. And you can make more of an impact in this world doing that than you ever could being a pastor. So I said, okay. <laughs> what I didn't know is when I graduated from the, from the seminary, they had, a, they had a stamp that they put on the back of my uh, degree and it's had uh, KOP, 
keep out of the pulpit. <laughs> so President Spence did his job. He kept me out. But uh, it's been a great, a great ride here. Great ride in coaching. I'd like to thank David Stair. When I got the letter to, uh, with an invite to go on the China trip, the first person I called told me, Keith, throw it in the trash. Evangel will never let you do that. Well, I didn't. And President Spence got behind it. If it went for David Stair getting behind it, supporting us all the way, that trip would have never happened. David Stair also supported us in doing uh, our preseason camps at Camp Canica. A lot of people remember the science fiction movie, The Blob. Jerry McCrestina remembers going to Camp Kanakuk and the horror story that he has with The Blob, <laughs> which broke his ankle. Did, didn't get to play it all that year. But that was, a, that was a great time, and Dr. Stair, without his influence and without his support, without his backing, those things would have never happened. Jim Edwards. I don't know how many of you remember Dr. Edwards here. My favorite all-time class, he was an English professor, was Bible is Lit. Every Monday, and I really didn't like it because I could never cut chapel on Monday, because Jim Edwards would cut the newspaper clippings of Evangel football, and he'd put those clippings in my, in my chapel seat. So if I didn't pick them up, He'd know I wasn't there. <laughs> but he, he did that every he did that every week. And that class was my favorite class. And one thing I'll I'll never forget, he gave me the image to trace through the Bible of fire. Who knew I would? basically in my career as a coach of the fire. Mm -hmm. Ironic stuff. Denny Duran, he instilled in me a passion for ministry in football. He gave me the opportunity to realize that I could do what President Spence told me I could do yeah. and making an impact for Christ on all the young men that I've worked for. And one thing I want to say about Denny Duran, he's one of the best coaches I've ever been around. Yeah. If he wasn't so torn between ministry and football, evangel football would have been a lot further along in the wind column then it, then it happened. He was, as an offensive guy, he was a genius. Yeah. We were doing things in 1980, in 1981, that people around the country are just doing now. We were running the shotgun. We were throwing it all over the place. And we were running that high octane offense that coaches would make fun of us about back in those days because they were running the wishbone and the and the veer. We were only about 40 years ahead of ourselves. I worked Florida State camps in the 1990s, and they were running the shotgun. Mark Rick was the offensive coordinator, and I worked with him every summer for seven years. And I told those guys, I said, we've been doing that for like 20 years. And this is what they told me. They said, Keith, if you had been at Florida State instead of Evangel, you'd be known as an innovator. <laughs> but right now, you're not known at all. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. <laughs> Dave Schrader, he brought a toughness to this program. Mental and physical toughness. I got from him Striders and Pittsburghs. Mm. And I guarantee you, mm. coast to coast, north and south, for 40 years, we did Pittsburghs. And everybody knows it. Everybody dreaded them. Everybody hated them. And they asked me, Coach, why do you call them Pittsburghs? I said, 
If you do Pittsburgh's, you'll be tough as steel. Mm. We never lost a game by not being ready in the fourth quarter or overtime. Right. We were we were tough, and I thank Coach Schrader for instilling those things in me. My coaches, and I apologize, Brandon. I should have never let Scott Metcalf do the housing list. Scott, you're fired. <laughs> no, Este did not do that. Este couldn't spell the names. <laughs> He had a different phrase for deep thirds. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let it go with that. But I'm uh, so proud of, you know, my coaches, when I left, they took over, Charlie, Scott. I got to mention Ron Este, he was like a brother. I'll tell you one quick story about him. We were playing Langston, and I looked up, and Langston had a tight end that was six foot six. And he was running down the field, and there was nobody within 15 yards of him. And I run down, I'm, I'm in horror. I run down the sidelines yelling, Ron, Ron, nobody's covering the tight end. Nobody's covering the tight end. The tight end's wide open. Nobody's covering the tight end. And, you know, he's over there doing his signals, you know, <laughs> and things like that. And then he, then he stops, and he turns to me. He says, shh. They might hear you. <laughs> we weren't covering the tight end. We had nine guys committed to the run, playing man on the corners. We beat them. We stopped them. There's one question I want to answer tonight. And that's when we went to China, the biggest question that we got asked, that I got asked, by a lot of people and media people, is why Evangel? Why Evangel? They never asked that question about PLU because they were a national power. They'd been to the playoffs. They even that year went to the quarter or semifinals. Everybody, you know, Frosty Westring was a, was a legend. They never asked why PLU, but they said, why Evangel? And one of, the reasons, one of the reasons they asked that question, in the first 14 years of this program, Evangel only had three winning seasons. There are a lot of reasons that we went, a lot, and because of the impact that that trip had on the lives, the spiritual emphasis that we had, taking Bibles and witnessing and sharing with the Chinese people over there, having... having uh, services in the courtyard and people in their rooms hearing us and coming down and listening to us. That was a great opportunity. And that was a great reason for us to go. But there's also a football reason. It gave me three weeks of spring practice that the Heart of America Conference didn't allow at that time. We changed our total offense. Changed it totally. I took freshmen and sophomores they took juniors and seniors. They had a swagger like you wouldn't believe, and my guys hated it because we didn't have that swagger. And Jeff Sager was asked by a reporter, what would be the worst thing that could happen on that trip? Jeff Sager said, well, if we lost all three games. By George, we lost all three games. <laughs> that was not a high water mark in my career. I said, thank God those games don't count. But you know what happened after that? For 13 straight years, Evangel had a winning record. In the 90s, we won 71% of our games, better than any college team in the state of Missouri. In a period of five years, we made the playoffs four times and had three conference championships. We were a program to be reckoned with on the national stage. We weren't just a, a school that had a football team that had a team every now and again. We did it every year. We were consistent. If you weren't ready for us, we would beat you, and we would beat you bad. Yeah. 
Now, I couldn't say that in 1991 in the spring when I was asked that, but I'm going to tell you this. I truly believe that would happen because I believed in this university. I believed in the young men that had gone before, and I believed in the young men that were going to be coming in. And so with that, I would like the players that played for me to stand up. Stand up. These guys and their teammates are why I'm here today. Nothing I did, you did it. It's your fault. And I want to thank you. I loved every minute of it. Have a seat. It went by real quick. Maybe not as long as I took to, to deliver this message, but it's like a blink. And what was so funny, when we walked, when I knew that it was time for me to go, I'm glad it wasn't the president that told me. I'm glad it wasn't the athletic director that told me. I was walking off the field after we had gotten beaten and embarrassed because I tell you this, I thought in 96 and 97, I'm convinced that we had the best football teams in the NAIA. And I just didn't do a good enough job convincing players that we could lose. But I was walking off the field after we had played Dawn. And it's, we were over at Plaster, the stadium was empty. I just done my radio interview trying to explain that debacle. And I was walking across the field. And that particular, I always parked behind the stadium, but that particular day we had to park in the parking lot across the, the south end zone, across the, the street, across Grand. And I was walking down the field trying to get to the gate to walk to my car. And I'm not going to say I heard a voice, but the thought was so clear and distinct to me that I stopped and I turned around almost as if I'd heard a voice. I looked back up at the press box. I thought it was Jerry Bro messing with me. But I knew Jerry used to checks out about the third quarter. So I knew he wasn't there. But it said it's time. Be sure I stayed an extra year. I like things to be even, so it would make it 10 years. So I, I wasn't sure. I went in before the season. I was afraid to tell President Spence. So I walked in there and I asked him, I asked him if I could resign. He said, do you mind if I resign? You know, I've gone through interviews for head coaching jobs and ask less, less questions. He grilled me that day. And when it was over, he said, okay. I think your rationale is right. So I stepped down. I never regretted my time here. I never regretted leaving this program. And I was unsure because I, I really, all I knew was, was Evangel. And I knew that my freshmen in 1998, when they grew up, my little puppy dogs were going to be bad dogs. And Charlie did it. Charlie had a bad team in 2001. And I was so proud of them. I was riding back from a game from Colleen, Texas. And I called, and I knew, I knew uh, Evangel was playing Benedictine in the quarterfinals. 
I was talking to my brother Ron, and he was sitting in front of President Spence, and he put me on the phone with President Spence. And it was really tight. And Evangel dropped that game, a close game. And the reason that I was on a bus riding back, I had my first state championship. with my boys in Texas. I was happy for my boys in Springfield. But there's something about a gold football, guys. There's just something about a gold football. And we were passing it around from seat to seat. God has blessed my time. God has blessed my days. I wish I could do it again but not really. We did it right the first time. Thank you all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we sincerely appreciate uh, the time that uh, we've had together this evening. Uh, just a few things uh, in regards to uh, tomorrow. Uh, all of our inductees, um, you have to give me your plaque back <laughs> because I'm going to give it back to you again at halftime of the game tomorrow. <laughs> so just a little bit of information there. Keith, uh, fantastic. I really appreciate the, all the words and uh, it's been a, a lot of fun knowing you, my friend, and we've had a lot of good times, a lot of good times, and have tremendous respect for you. Um, I do want to just mention, uh, David Stair was mentioned a couple times this evening. Uh, he called me um, yesterday, and uh, he's at home ill, uh, ill and, and so he just could not be here this evening, but he was feeling uh, better and he's really hoping that he can be uh, at the game tomorrow, so that's the reason why he was not here. Um, our student uh, uh, recognition, both of those individuals couldn't be here as well, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually celebrate them at uh, one of our home basketball games uh, this year, uh, so that's the reason that they couldn't be here, and I just failed to mention that earlier uh, in the event. Uh, Mr. Dowden, is there anything that I am forgetting Okay, if you need tickets to the ball game tomorrow, uh, you need to see Mr. Dowden over here. Uh, we're going to take some photos. I uh, have some great photo ops uh, up here at the end of the event. And I think if that is it uh, from Phil, then I think that we are finished for this evening. And thank you so much for being here.